Yeah, I hope you can see my screen. It's called the True Wisdom from James 3, verses 13 to 18. But before we go through to the verses, I will give a short introduction to the book of James. Yes, as the name, this is written by James, but not James, one of the apostles. James, who wrote this letter, is James, the half-brother of Jesus. His name, actually, Jacobus in Greek, or in Hebrew, is Jacob, Yaakov. In the Indonesian Bible, we call Jacobus. I know in Portuguese, it's called Tiago. But quite strange, in English, it's called James. But to be consistent, we will call James in this talk. James did not believe that Jesus is the Messiah. But crucifixion of Jesus and his resurrection changed him, transformed him. James became believer. And he becomes one of the leaders of the church in Jerusalem, together with Peter, the other apostles, and James. They lead the church. There, is, there was a difficult situation on the church. On, it's explained on Acts chapter 15, but James spoke up to resolve this critical issue. So James, known as good leader and wisdom. And this book was written about uh, circa 40, year 45 AD, one of the earliest book in the New Testament, sent to the Jews that believer in Jesus spread in different area. At that time, the Gospels have not been written. Letters of Paul is not have been written. So they have little guidance. That's why James wrote the letter to guide the Jews spread in different area to give them guidance. There were flee from Israel because of the persecution after the death and resurrection of Jesus. The main theme is the living faith. So James gives them guidance how to live as a faithful Christian, faithful follower of Jesus. They, James gives them a practice guidance for day to day living. James style of reading is short and simple sentences and straightforward. Sometimes it's struggle to understand that he use strong words. Remember this letter was sent to the follower of Jesus. I can give you one example. Submit yourself oh, then to okay. God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Come near to God and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Grieve. Mourn and wail. Change your lotter to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourself before the Lord and he will lift you up. We can see here James talking straightforward and strong language 
to the church, to me and you in the context. I think James wants to remind us to be aware of ourselves, to be aware of our church, and never be complacent. It's a harsh, but I think it's a good to always remind us. Okay, this is the introduction of Book of James. Yes, it's the true wisdom. There are three parts. Part one is the sign of the true wisdom. And the part two, the early, earthly or false wisdom. The word wisdom is, it's quote and unquote, because it's not a real wisdom. And the third part is the godly or true wisdom. I just explain what's written in the Bible, word by word. The sign of true wisdom. So this is how we can see which is wise or not. I repeat again, James 3 verses 13. I put here two intro, uh, true translation, NIV and New King James Version. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it by their good life, by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. In New King James Version, who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that his words are done in the meekness of wisdom. So it's clear for this, is the sign of true wisdom are three. First is good life. What is good life? We are no good life is, good life is what life we want. Healthy, happy, abundance, so we can bless others. Good life is shown by deeds, by actions, to support others, to help others, to build others in actions. And the third part is humility. And in the New King James Version, it says meekness. So this is the sign of true wisdom. And now we go to the second part, is the earthly wisdom. In this, in James, it explains three parts about this earthly wisdom. What is the source and how it operates and what is the result? So it's explained in verses 14 and 15. But if your harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but it is earthly and spiritual demonic. Mostly same in King, New King James Version, but the word and spiritual in New King James Version is say it says sensual. So based on this, we can learn what is the source of false wisdom. It is earthly, number one, number two, and spiritual or sensual. Number three is demonic. Earthly means it only consider living on earth. It's not consider eternal life. The horizon is short. This is one of the concepts of the false wisdom. The second one is unspiritual or sensual. It means it based on feeling or sense. You might have word 
you might have listened. Some people said, when it feels good, it must, it must be right. So this wisdom based on feeling, which is false wisdom. Based on this, if someone make you angry, if someone disappoint you, or if someone make you down, he or she must be wrong because he or she hurt your feeling. But this is false wisdom. The truth is not based on feeling or sense. And the third is demonic. So the false wisdom is demonic. The basic word is dem demon. So it's, it's in line with devil. Maybe people don't realize false wisdom is in line with devil strategy to destroy human, to make human far from God. So this is the source of false wisdom. Oh, but also, these explain the verses explain how the, this wisdom operates. It's, it's harbor bitter envy, if selfish ambitions, if boasting and lie against the truth. This is the false wisdom operates. This is how we sow them. Mean first is harbor bitter envy. It based on envy. People who do not accept other people better than them and harbor, harbor bitter envy and attack them. Do evil things to other people based on envy. And the second is self ambition. It's always me, 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 me. I am the most important thing. I have ambition. I want to achieve that. I don't care other people. And the third is boasting, arrogant. So to other people that I am the best, I'm good, I'm great person, it's boasting but it lies against the truth. It means while they are boasting, deep inside, they are hurt. Yes, Lord. But they lie against the truth. It's like live with mask, it's hypocrite. So this is how the false wisdom operates, based on James. Okay, and then we, we look at the result. What is the result of false wisdom? Verse 16. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder and every evil practice. So it's clear the result is disorder and every evil practice. We all know about the war, First World War, Second World War, and most of the war all over the world is based on selfish ambition. One strong leader has selfish ambition and other people also have selfish ambition and they fight and create war all over the place. We human being make uh, wars of our planet Earth 
because self is ambition. So this is false wisdom. And it can create disorder and every evil practice. So I hope you understand the second part about the false wisdom, wisdom that come from the earth, earthly wisdom. Same with the false wisdom, James gives us the source, how it operates, and the result. The source, the source is very clear from the verses 13. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. So the source is clear, its source is from heaven. The source is from God. So this is the source of true wisdom. And we we'll want to look at how the true wisdom operates. There are seven list in verses 17. In verse 17. We will look at one by one. The first one is pure, and second is peace-loving. The third is considerate. In the new king, in the NIV is called considerate, but in the new king James called gentle. The fourth is submissive, or in new king James version is called willing to yield. The fifth is full of mercy, and good through it, the sixth is impartial, and the seventh is sincere. First of all, is pure. Pure means do not combine with other. Pure gold means it only contains gold, no other materials in it. So pure wisdom is only focused on God, only focus to obey God and to support others. No hidden agenda, it's pure. The second is peace loving. Yes, you understand peace loving. A love peace, wants to bring peace everywhere they go. Don't start fighting on quarrel. It's peace loving. The third one is considerate or gentle. Everything we do, we need to consider others. It's contrary to the self-ambition, which only consider for self. It also means gentle, to consider other people feeling or situation. The, for, the fourth is submissive, or in New King James Watson is willing to yield. It means we will to change our mind or our situation if we found better understanding. We will willing to change and obey God, although it's different of our own opinion. We will to submit, submit to God's word. So this is the fourth uh, 
how the wisdom operates. This is how we see wise people. And the fifth is full of mercy and good fruit. It's come as a one package. Merciful, willing to help and share with others. But it, it is in the same way in as a good fruit because if you give mercy to others, God will bless you. So it's in one package, full of mercy and good fruit. It will become together. And number six is impartial. Yeah, we know what is impartial means. No prejudice. Consider all people the same, rich or poor, man or woman, young or old, black or white, impartial, no prejudice, treat and consider all people the same. And the last one is sincere. It's contradict with the false wisdom which is hypocrite, sincere or no hypocrite. So this is how the true wisdom operates. And the last part is, what is the result? It's explained in verses 18. Peacemakers who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness. People who operate with the true wisdom spread peace wherever he or she goes. They sow peace and they will reap a righteousness. So this is the result of true wisdom. So we can see there are different wisdom. The false wisdom focus of self focus and the true wisdom focus on God and others. So this is the main difference. I hope you can grasp what is the difference and how it operates. Now we know this information. We know what is the difference. Does it make us a wise person? The answer is no. It will make us a wise person oh. if, we, if we put it into service, into our day-to-day -day life. If we put it into actions. In a while, uh, we will have a communion to remember what Jesus did to save us on the cross. This is one perfect example of true wisdom. It's pure. He's loving. Considerate. 
submissive, full of mercy and good fruit. impartial and sincere. Uh, thank you. <laughs>